everyone. This is Esther Sir. Um, welcome back to the Holy Spirit Disciple Training uh, number two. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, he ascended, uh, he meaning Jesus Christ, uh, 40 days after Jesus' uh, resurrection. And as promised, he poured out the Holy Spirit for the first time to 120 disciples gathered in Mark's um, attic 10 days later. Uh, from then until now, the Holy Spirit came to God's children who believed in Jesus that had been forgiven from their sins. You could be forgiven by asking God for forgiveness. Um, and um, he has changed their lives um, to expand the nation of God. <clears throat> The world cannot give life and resurrection. Introduced in the uh, Gospel of John, um, chapter 6, verse 35, 41, 48, 51, he said, I am the bread of life. Verse 35 says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Um, I am that bread of life. Uh, I alone afford by my doctrine and spirit that nourishment by which the soul is saved unto life eternal <clears throat> uh, by Adam Clark commentary. Verse 41 says the Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. Uh, verse 48, I am that bread of life. He emphasizes uh, once more. Uh, but um, in verse 49, um, uh, Jesus said, Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. Uh, he is referring to the children uh, that has been in um, the, uh, the Israelite uh, that has been in the wilderness um, after um, Exodus uh, in Egypt, right? Uh, the advantage of the manna was small. It was referred to this life, but the living bread is so excellent that the man who feedeth on it shall never die. Um, this bread is Christ's human nature, which he took to present uh, to the Father as a sacrifice for the sins of the world to purchase all things pertaining to life and good uh, godliness. Uh, for sinners of every nation who repent and believe in him. Verse 50, uh, this is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man um, may eat thereof and not die. Uh, verse 51, um, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Um, and the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will uh, give for the rest, uh, for the, the life of the world. Verse 51, um, I am the living bread. The words are again repeated um, <clears throat> in John 35, John 6, uh, 48. But with a new fullness of meaning, he spoke before of uh, bread, which was um, of life, characterized by life producing life he now speaks of the bread as uh, living containing the principle of life in itself um, John 4 13 through 14 and John 5 26 once again too um, he answers their demand for bread from heaven John 6 31 the lifeless manna fell and lay upon the ground until they uh, gather it gathered it, and passed to corruption if they did not. Um, each day's supply met the need of each day, but uh, met that, that only. He is the bread uh, containing life in itself, coming by his own will and act from heaven, living among men, uh, imparting life to those uh, who eat by coming to and believing on him so that it uh, becomes in them a principle of life too which cannot die but shall live forever many uh, people um, go to church or believe or have religion or have some form of faith uh, because they want to be blessed but the blessing that they are referring to is here on earth 
uh, not so much the afterlife. They sometimes don't even believe in the afterlife, that they that this life is it. And so um, everything that they do, everything um, pertains to this world and this life only. Um, and this passage, um, I, uh, I really dug up for you guys um, so that this doesn't pass um, and that you would reflect back on what really um, is motivating you um, to doing the things that you do, why you do what you do and how you do it. Um, that um, sometimes we do things that are killing ourselves. We're working so hard, workaholics and everything. And uh, we believe that this life on uh, earth is it and nothing more. So you're giving it all you've got. But I want to um, bring this um, passage to you and I hope it sticks. The world cannot give life and resurrection. Okay. And uh, make me a form and I will not be hungry forever. I am the light of the world. John uh, 8, 12. Uh, then uh, spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I am the light of the world. So the, the, uh, the operative words here are believed and uh, you will be lighted. Okay. Ang angst. Um, uh, me, Holy Spirit, be alive in the eternal life. Angst um, is a word um, that means feeling of anxiety, apprehension, or insecurity, fear of the Lord, or reverence. Um, so when we think of the Holy Spirit, we need to have angst. We need to have uh, we need to have caution. We need to deal with, um, you know, and have that full fear of the Lord. Uh, when I say fear, it's just uh, that awesomeness um, and the reverence is what I'm saying. Ephesians 5, 9, I'm going to read it to you in two different versions. Um, this one is the NLT version, but I'm going to add two other vo versions for you. King James Version and NASB Version. And from time to time, I'm going to do that. <clears throat> I can't do that consistently through each and every passage, but I do that only to cross-reference and check. Uh, sometimes these uh, different versions are um, distorted or it, it doesn't have the fullness of meaning. So um, I do this time to time. So, okay, um, uh, King James Version says, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Um, and then NASB, uh, the, um, the new um, American Standard uh, Bible version, um, says, For the fruit of the light, light consists in all goodness, um, righteousness, and truth. I am the sheep's door, uh, chapter 10, verse 7 and 9. Only go in and out of him. I will eat the form of life. Uh, verse 7 says, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Um, verse 9, um, I am the door. Uh, by me, if any man enters in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. So um, if you haven't... Um, and what this passage is referring to is that um, if you haven't already um, uh, uh, accepted Christ as your um, uh, Lord and Savior, um, then I ask that you would do that. Um, invite yourself to do that right now. Um, you could stop the video and, and ask um, God to... Um, enter and uh, repent of your sins that you haven't um, accepted Christ in the past um, and all the wrongdoing. Everything that is um, seen is um, not right before God. Um, it, I, I would ask uh, to invite you to um, pray that prayer um, and then um, ask him, invite uh, Jesus into your heart at this moment. And um, that is the way that you would um uh, you would be able to, you know, uh, uh, have uh, be saved. Um, and uh, that's what this uh, passage is referring to. 
I am the good shepherd. Um, chapter 10, verse 11 and 14. Only follow him. I will always be at peace wherever I go. Um, verse 11 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth li his life for the sheep. He laid down his life uh, for the sheep. We are the sheep. And verse 14 says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. Uh, which means, I don't like the way that, that, that is word, but it just means that uh, my sheep knows me. I know my sheep and my sheep knows me. Um, and um, this is a good uh, reference to those that are, um, you know, Christian moms and parents and grandparents and so on that are, you know, uh, uh, waiting for their loved ones to, you know, be accepted um, into the kingdom of God. Um, know this first, um, God said, Jesus is the good shepherd and he knows his sheep and, um, his sheep knows him. Um, even the people that are very, an, uh, you know, uh, really, um, against, and, um, there's a lot of energy, whether it's good or bad, it's a good sign. If there's no energy, if they're just kind of dismissing it all together, that's a bad sign. But if there's energy, there's conflict. It's a it's an internal conflict that's going on. So um, I would, uh, if I were you, the the you know loved one, um, you know I know it's hard when you're dealing with a person all the time, but um, I would pray uh, really diligently and. Um, uh, I would ask that you, um, you know, uh, find yourself amongst um, some, you know, trusty uh, uh, intercessory prayer team. Um, I am one of them, so you know, um, you know, you you can you can uh, join in on the prayer and request uh, that we would pray for you and your family or whatever, and uh, we would do so. Okay. So, but know that, um, you know, it's not something that we did uh, or we didn't do. Um, Jesus knows his people. He's got, he's got you covered. Okay, so don't worry. I am the resurrection and the life. Um, 1125, um, I'm hoping for more. I live even if I die. Verse 25, uh, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Isn't that the good news? I am the way, the truth, and the life. 14.6 For, um, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh into unto the Father but by me. Um, <clears throat> it's a no-go. Here's the way it uh, is. Um, so... Um, you know, uh, we can, we can do the debate, um, all day long. We can argue all day long, but at the end of the day, we are not the creators. We are the creation and therefore whatever, uh, whoever is the creator has the set, um, the rules therefore is, um, set before the creator we are the creation and um i you know uh the the fear of the lord um the the wisdom knowledge um starts with fear of the lord and um if we don't come to that conclusion in our life that we are not the master of our own destiny we don't know um, you know, that one second in front of us, um, you know, on, on average, uh, we may live to about 80. It could be a little bit longer, uh, a little bit shorter or whatever, but we don't know, know what's going to happen in front of us. Like Buddha didn't have, um, you know, it, Buddha died. Um, all these people died that says they are uh, deity and, and so on, but um, only Jesus Christ lived again. So, I would say um, only, when he says only through him um, that uh, he is the way, he is the truth and the life, and no man uh, cometh unto the Father that is um, uh, God the Father 
uh, but by me, meaning Jesus Christ, um, you know, um, I would uh, behoove uh, that, um, you know, this uh, has some truth to it. Uh, what do you have, what have you got to lose? You know, pray the prayer and ensure that your, your eternal life is um, forever saved before you go on debating all day long. You know, eternity is a long time to gamble away, right? All right. <clears throat> I am the true vine, 15, 1 and 5. I am an oak. Uh, they will bear, bear a fragrance and delicious fruit and they will be enjoyed forever. Uh, what is the meaning of the coming of the Holy Spirit? Matthew 16, 28. Verily I say to you, before you die of the man standing here, uh, there are those who will see the man bring uh, with him the king, the rule of this one, <clears throat> the ruler <clears throat> of this one. Uh, you can't, um, where, what happened here? Okay. You can't go against it. Luke 9, 27. I tell you the truth. Some standing here right now will die before. I just said that, didn't I? Doesn't it sound? Uh, will die before they see the kingdom of God. It sounds very familiar. Um, for the first time, his kingdom is starting to come true. I think it's because I've been going through and, uh, and I'm chucking away. This one I'm not going to chuck away even though there's a lot of mistakes. Um, pardon me for that. Uh, for his kingdom and his righteousness, John 14, 18 through 19, uh, verse 18 says, No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Isn't that an amazing verse for those that are, um, you know, you feel that um, you're, you've been orphaned. Maybe, um, you know, I hate to say for those uh, maybe um, you've been uh, adopted and you feel like uh, you're the only per soul in this earth. Um, um, hang on to this verse, okay? Pay comfort in this verse. Uh, John 14, 18 says, No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Uh, read this until it resonates into your spirit and soul, people. Don't take your life away because you think there's no one there who cares. God cares and the body of Christ cares. I care um, enough to spend uh, days and weeks and putting this together like, you know, frantically putting this together. Nobody um, assigned me. Nobody told me to do it. But the Holy Spirit told me to do it. Somebody out there is uh, waiting for God's word and taking con um, comfort, needing that comfort. So if you're out there, if you come across this, uh, you know, uh, video and this resonates with you, well, then um, we've all been praying for you. Okay. Verse 19 says, soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. Uh, contrast with the world, right? Um, so um, our God is an amazing God. How did Jesus come back to our midst? Uh, will return by the Holy Spirit? Uh, yes, we're all waiting um, uh, for the second coming of uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, and if you have accepted Jesus Christ and have... Um, um, uh, uh, you know, I asked for the, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then you too will be waiting for that second coming of Christ. John 14, 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Um, I have a very bad memory. <laughs> Um, I don't want to say that. Um, I used to, let's say it like that. Um, so I'm not good at memorizing or anything. Um, but I, I'm sure I, it's because I haven't tried. Uh, but um, 
But, um, you know, I have listened to the Bible many, many times, several dozens of times, but, uh, but, you know, not enough uh, where I would be able to pinpoint certain passages or whatever. But at times when, uh, when I need to, um, the Holy Spirit reminds me of certain passage that I need to go back to and study. And, um, and really, uh, Holy Spirit is our uh, teacher. He is the teacher that teaches us all things. And uh, what did you say we learned that day? John 14, 20. At that, day, uh, at that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Uh, principles of life in the heavenly state. Um, if you're conflicted, if you have questions, uh, whatever your doctrine, whatever your faith, and you are wondering, what if there is something else out, something else out there? What if this Bible, this Bible, what if Jesus person, Jesus Christ is a real deal? And if, um, you know, if, um, you know, uh, just, a sm uh, just a small, even an inkling of doubt uh, that may, that that may be, maybe it is the Holy, maybe it is the Holy Spirit that is leading you that to have that so healing so um he is the one that constantly at work, constantly at work in all of us um to and close closer and closer to him. drawing all he is drawing all of his people to himself and know that he is not going to person not a person not a one soul um you know uh you know um leave this earth uh with uh, him uh, catching them okay so that believe in that believe in that okay god the god only heard um with the with the coming of jesus he was able to be seen through the eyes the advent of the holy spirit has made it available for us to receive god into us um, a person over two thousand years ago um, that is only a, a written in the book and you may or may not know may have never seen how can you know how can you believe but it is the holy spirit who is um, constantly working in our spirit to um, witness to us um, and to teach us and to testify that uh, jesus christ is real he is the real deal guys just as Jesus' life was prophesied beforehand in the Bible, the coming of the Holy Spirit is the fulfillment of the words prophesied beforehand in the Bible. John 16, 7, Nevertheless, I, will, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if, you, uh, if I not go away, uh, if I uh, go not away, the way that they word that, the comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. Um, Act 1.5, John baptized with water, but in just a, a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Concrete fulfillment co uh, commitments. Read the following passages and think of places, recipients, people used, uh, methods, and phenomena uh, that have uh, that have appeared okay <clears throat> all right so acts 2 1 through 4 on the day of pentecost all the believers were meeting together in one place where is that one place mark's um uh mark's uh, uh upper room right um suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of mighty windstorm um, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Um, then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. Um, and everyone present was um, filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Um, and I am praying for you right now that that spirit um, is going to come upon each and every person that is going to uh, watch this video and um, listen to this video. Um, uh, I pray that prayer that uh, the Holy Spirit will reside and come into your hearts 
Acts 8, 14 through 17, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had accepted God's message, they sent Peter and John there. As soon as they arrived, they prayed for these new believers to receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them, for they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, then Peter and John laid their hands upon these believers, and they received the Holy Spirit. So let's go back and recount. Um, so uh, we are um, looking at uh, all the people, all the believers were met in one place. So that is a location, right? Um, and then uh, the sound, the different things that happened sound from heaven like a roaring of mighty windstorm and it filled the house. Um, and then like flames or tongues of fire. So all these people were just like, you know, they're speaking in tongues in different languages. Um, and then uh, uh, pe these were people, uh, they, they, were, they were from Samaria. Um, and, um, and then, uh, they, they were shocked and they sent, uh, Peter and John, right? Uh, so, you know, um, so all these things that we're, we're going back to. Where am I? Okay. So Acts 9, 10 through um, 8, the 18, so this is a long passage. Now there was a believer in Damascus named um, Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision, calling Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replied. Um, the Lord said, go over to Straight Street to the house of Judas. Uh, when you get there, ask for a man named Tarsus named Saul. He is uh, praying for me, praying to me right now. <laughs> is that amazing? Um, I wish that would happen to me right now with all the people that uh, it would be uh, just like that in those days. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. Uh but Lord, explained Ananias, I've heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem. You know, Saul was a bad, bad guy. He was killing all the Christians, right? And, um, and he is authorized by the leading priest to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. But the Lord said, Go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to uh, take my message to the Gentiles and to kings, as well as to the people, uh, as well as to the people of Israel. So, if you are thinking, "Oh boy, these people are never going to be God's people," they're just their character and all of these things, the what they've done and how they're doing it. Um, you know, um, God chooses who He chooses, so we need to pray for everybody. And I will show him how much he must uh, suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, something like scales fell from uh, Saul's eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he got up and um, was baptized. Isn't this amazing? Acts 10, 44 through 48. Um, even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. So even if you were just right there, if you're the right place at the right time, um, if you're listening to this video, you are at the right place at the right time. I'm telling you, you're going to be blessed. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too. Uh, for they heard them um, speaking in other tongues and praising God. Then Peter asked, um, can anyone object to their uh, being baptized uh, now? 
that they have uh, received the Holy Spirit just as we did. Um, so, you know, if you're objecting to, um, the Holy Spirit is not going to bombard into our hearts. He is um, a, a person um, that is not going to come unless he is absolutely wanted and desired. So um, if you have any apprehensions or anything, um, yeah, I would just say, just invite him, desire him. He is a good God. So he gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Afterward, Cornelius asked him to stay with them for several days. Um, Acts 19, 1 through 7, uh, uh, Apo while Apollos uh, was in Corinth, Paul uh, traveled through the interior regions until he reached Ephesus on the coast uh, where he found uh, several believers. Did you receive the Holy Spirit uh, when you believed, he asked them. No, they replied. We haven't um, even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Um, then uh, what baptism uh, did you experience, he asked. Um, and they replied, the baptism of John. That's the water, right? Uh, Paul said, John's baptism called for repentance for, from sin. But John himself told the people to believe in the one who would later uh, come later, meaning Jesus. As soon as they heard this, um, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then when uh, Paul laid um, his hands on them, uh, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in other languages and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. These promises are now given to you as well. First, believe in this promise and yearn for the Holy Spirit. Um, yes, um, you know, I, I would ask, you can, you can pray this prayer right now. You could stop this video. You could, um, you know, pray this with me. I mean, um, but um, if you haven't, um, if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then this is a time for you to do that. Um, uh, you can, uh, renounce all the other Lords. If you were the Lord yourself, if you thought you were the master of your own destiny, I have news for you. Um, I, with all due respect, you are not the master of your own destiny, uh, as talented, as wealthy, and as bright as you may be, or uh, think you may be, you cannot be the Lord of your own life. Um, and I would ask that uh, you would come to the ultimate um, creator, the master of um, the universe and the God of God, the king of kings and the Lord of lords to come invite him into your heart and uh, um, ask the Holy Spirit uh, to come um, into your heart right now. Um, and if you have um, just a comment um, send me um, a comment um, and I would love to bless you um, and pray with you. What do you need first, especially before you receive the Holy Spirit? Acts 2.38. Um, uh, Peter, Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, there you have it. When we try to fix our attitudes, uh, attitudes before God to be with Christ and life and to sin, um, then you receive the Holy Spirit as a gift. So we need to just change our attitudes, okay, um, that we are not the master. If you are thinking that you know it all, you have it all, and you got this whole thing down, well, I have news for you. Um, you won't know two seconds from now what's going to happen to your life. So, you know, have a little bit of uh, humility and um, ask um Ask the Lord of Lord, the, uh, the creator of all, um, you know, how your life should be. Um, if you would turn over your life to him, 
um, then I congratulate you and welcome you into the body of Christ. Then you receive the Holy Spirit as gift. Okay, so Luke eleven thirteen. if you know that you will give good things to your children, even if you are evil, your heavenly father will not give the Holy Spirit to uh, those who ask. Um, so our father, our God is our father, our spiritual father, our father in heaven, our creator, and he's not going to want um, bad things for, for us. Um, and that's why he has sent his only son, um, the most precious. Um, he has uh, not withheld um, against us. So um, ask the Holy Spirit into your heart and uh, see how miraculous your life would change. So this concludes part two and see you at part three.